Okay, so uh, let's just talk about Excel and how to uh, graph these things in Excel. Um, so notice here we've got, uh, whoops, don't do that. some data here, right? Um, this, I assume, is time, right? So let's label that time in seconds, right? No, this is time. That's the x-axis. And this is moles, or concentration, of IO3 minus, right? Um, and this is molarity, right? Not moles. Okay, and this is, you got to put your units. Because who knows what the units are if you don't put them, okay? The other thing is, is this graph here, um, although mostly good, doesn't effectively represent exactly what I'm trying to see. Right, we've got all of this dead space here. So what I want to do is adjust my axes, okay? So let's adjust this. Format. So format the axis. So the minimum, it doesn't make sense to make the minimum zero. So let's make the minimum something that makes more sense, like 60. Okay? The maximum is okay at 160. So that looks much better, I think. And then let's change this as well, making the minimum, I don't know, 20. And close that. Okay. We could even make it less than that, or more than that, I mean. Say 25. Okay, I think that much looks much better. And the other thing I want to do is um, everything up. Okay, that's good enough, right there. Okay, so now what you want to do is, well, now it's messed up our axes, but whatever. Pardon? Yeah, that's true. Okay, well, let's do that. Okay, either way. No, we're trying to get rid of the, um, yeah. Trying to get rid of all the minor lines here. Yeah. I'm trying to do that. And well, I keep doing that and what? See, there's no option. That's what I've been trying to do. I don't know. Anyways, it doesn't matter all that much, okay? But in the version, the other version that I'm used to, it's much easier. All you got to do is click on the axes and say no minor grid lines. But you know, obviously, this is a different version. So I'm trying to figure it out while I'm recording. So 
anyways, that's not the most important part of this, okay? So uh, let's take more. So now I want to click on my here on what we call a trend line, or let's let's get rid of it for right now. Let's click on our data, and then we're going to say add trend line, and then put linear. Notice it's established this line back there, okay? But not only do you want that trend line there, you want to display the equation on the chart and display your R squared value on it as well, okay? Ideally, your R squared value will be 1, okay? When it's 1, um, then you can have confidence that this line really does show what, um, uh, what you're looking for, a uh, one-to-one -one representation here, okay? Huh? Go back and watch the video, okay? We don't have much time. Um, the thing is, is... Uh, what you'll find now is you've got this in a y equals mx plus b slope, okay? So don't be like just putting points on some, you know, like graph that is given to you like on the worksheet, okay? That, that was for you could just do it quickly and label your stuff down, okay? This is what I want you to show in your uh, book uh, when you turn it in. So you can actually say, here's my line, you know, and you can do this um, once, twice, however many runs you've done, okay? Again, you can do this um, through with your temperature data, too, and figure out what the activation energy should be of the reaction, because you've got those three temperatures, or those three reactions at three different temperature values. So you can figure out what the Arrhenius equation is for this, and you can figure out um, the um, Arrhenius value as well at the y-intercept of this, okay? So anyways, uh, that's what I want you to do. Are there any questions about that? Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I would prefer it. Um, again, it's just... I mean, not the major grid lines, the minor ones, you know? I mean, I don't need, it just is like, it's too cluttered as far as I'm concerned, you know. But um, then you're going to use this here as your um, y equals mx plus b line, okay? So that's the best fit. Again, you want this r squared value to be 1. If it's anything like 0.995 or something like that, that's pretty bad, you know. So 0.91 is really not very good, you know, but those are your data. What are you going to do about it, you know? Usually you'll find in experiments you don't get things that are exactly one, you know, but um, ideally they would be.